Highgate, or Highgate, as the tube announcer pronounces it, is an upmarket suburb of North London. And when I say upmarket, I mean up. The poshest part is at the top of Highgate Hill, a fearsomely steep climb for a horse and cart, and not much fun if you're a human either. At its steepest, the gradient is 1 in 11. If only there were an easy way to do things. This is the story of the Highgate Hill cable tram. Like many of London's public transport schemes, the Highgate Hill cable tram owed its origins to the USA, and a gentleman named Andrew Halliday. In 1873, Halliday demonstrated a new invention in San Francisco, a cable car. The basic concept was simple and so effective that it's still in use to this day. You have a railway. Between the rails is a conduit. In that conduit is a constantly moving cable powered by a steam engine at the end of the line. Then you have a tram, or streetcar if you like. The tram is fitted with a gripper that sits inside the conduit. When the driver wants to move, they engage the gripper, which grabs onto the cable, and the tram is hauled along. To stop, the gripper is disengaged and the driver applies the brakes. Now, to be fair, the principle of cable haulage is very old indeed and actually predates the steam age. What Halliday's invention did was to give the technology a certain amount of flexibility, which made it suitable for commuter transport. In the 1840s, rope haulage had been tried on the London and Blackwall Railway with the big drawback that once a coach had been started in motion, it couldn't be stopped until it was disconnected at the very end of the line. Not much use for travelling from station to station over short distances. Also, the rope kept snapping and smashing through brick walls at high velocity, but that's another story. The cable tram also had the advantage, as any San Franciscan could tell you, of being able to climb hills that no conventional tram could. But it wasn't just San Francisco that took an interest. Within two decades, there were over 500 miles of cable tramway in the USA, and Halliday was already looking further afield. He set up a new company in Britain, the Halliday Patent Cable Tramway Corporation, to promote his invention. In 1881, another company was set up, the Steep Grade Tramways and Works Company Limited, which was effectively a subsidiary of Halliday's company. In July 1882, the Steep Grade Tramways etc. etc. applied to Parliament for permission to build a line, permission which was granted. Highgate Hill was the site chosen. The line wasn't just intended to be a form of public transport, it was also to be a showcase for Halliday's technology. Highgate was an ideal site, despite not being very built up. The steep slope was a great place to demonstrate the capabilities of the tram, but it was also close to the City of London. The venture was a truly transatlantic one. The line was designed by William Eppelsheimer, the engineer behind the first cable cars in San Francisco. The practical engineering was done by Joseph Kincaid, an Irishman with many pioneering feats in the field of tramways to his name, and another American, S. Bucknell Smith. Technical know-how was provided by Halliday's company. The tramway ran from the Archway Tavern, which was a terminus for horse trams, to Highgate Village. Originally it was to go to Southwood Lane, but in the end it terminated at South Grove, some way short of there. The engine house would be located on the High Street, did I already make the joke about how high the high str- Oh, okay then. The track was built to a narrow gauge of 3 feet 6 inches. The trams themselves were operated as what we might call two-car units. The first car was known as a dummy and housed the gripper mechanism and the driver, or grip man. The second car was a trailer that could, in theory, be disconnected at the end of the line and hauled by a horse. The tram ran at a speed of 6.5 miles per hour. On the 29th of May 1884, the Lord Mayor of London declared the tramway officially open. It was not very successful. The fare was tuppence, which seems, if you'll pardon the expression, a little steep. The City and South London Railway would open a few years later and charge the same price to go all the way from Stockwell to the city, a distance of three miles. Steep though the hill was, the distance the Highgate line covered was less than a mile. The fare was progressively reduced to tuppence up a penny down and eventually a penny both ways. Still, it didn't attract passengers in the kind of numbers necessary to turn a profit. But that didn't have to matter. 
The tramway was really a demonstrator, what we'd now call a loss leader. It wouldn't make money in itself, but it would generate sales that would. But it didn't. It had a tendency to break down, or somewhat alarmingly, to suffer from runaways, neither of which is exactly a selling point. In 1888, the Halliday Patent Cable Tramway Corporation went into liquidation. The line was taken over by a new company, the Highgate and Hampstead Cable Tramways Limited. In 1892, disaster struck. A bigger disaster than usual. On the 5th of December, a cable snapped, resulting in a car running away and crashing. The line was closed and the Board of Trade demanded improvements. There was to be a new, stronger cable. Every car was to be fitted with automatic brakes, and there would be no more dummy and trailer sets. Only single cars could be operated. It was a tall order for a financially unstable line, and so yet another company took over, the Highgate Hill Tramway Company. The line reopened in 1897, but not before it had a glimpse of the future. An organisation known as the County of London Tramways Syndicate was sweet-talking the London County Council. The syndicate wanted to take over all the trams in London, standardise them and electrify them to turn them into a proper network. The county council were a little bit eh about it, and so the syndicate offered to turn the closed Highgate tram into a demonstration line for the benefits of electricity. But by June of 1896 they'd changed their minds, so when the tramway was reopened it was still a cable car. The line limped on until 1909 when the London County Council took it over, and essentially did what the syndicate had proposed 13 years earlier. The line was rebuilt to standard gauge, electrified, connected to other lines, and became, to all intents and purposes, another part of London's tram network. It did finally get its extension to Southwood Lane, and... For all the advantages of electricity, the trams making the climb to Highgate had to be fitted with extra powerful brakes. The last trams in Highgate ran in 1952. These days, buses make short work of the hill. The Highgate Hill cable tram was a pioneer all right, but not a successful one. The only other cable tram in London was one up Brixton Hill, which I have also done a video on. I'll make a link pop up there in the corner. As soon as electrification had proved practical, its fate was sealed. Still, it's an interesting curiosity of London's transport history. Well, I hope you found this video suitably gripping. If so, click the like button and perhaps grab onto the subscribe button for more content. I feel like I ought to do more on the trams in London. I really don't know enough about them. Thanks as ever to my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon, you are the gripper to my cable. And I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio.